This is going to be a very quick video on how to create the Keyhole toolpath in Carbide Create. So if this is something that you're interested in, you're going to want to stick around. Hey, what's going on guys? This is Edgar with AE Timber and Pine. I recently received a message on somebody that was struggling and part of the struggles that they were having is how to run a keyhole toolpath in Carbide Create. And I actually had never run a keyhole toolpath prior to making this video. I actually didn't even realize that there was a keyhole toolpath available in Carbide Create. In my mind, I was thinking about making a couple different contour toolpaths to get the outcome. But when I clicked on toolpaths, I saw the keyhole toolpath option available. So that saved me a lot of time and I wanna share with you guys how to use that keyhole toolpath. So let's just go ahead and jump right into this video. All right guys, jumping into Carbide Create, the very first thing that you wanna do is you wanna set up your job, your tool setup. And so this grid is the representation of your actual material. So you need to make this the actual representation of your actual material. And you also have to visualize this, that this is going to be the back of your material, right? that we're carving the keyhole on the back side, unless you have, for some whatever reason, you want it on the front side. Once you have this, you're gonna come over here, you're gonna create a vector. Go ahead and click on the circle vector and make a vector of any size that you want. The size of the circle doesn't matter. The CNC is going to plunge or start your keyhole at the center of the circle. So it could be this big or it could be this big, it doesn't matter. It's still going to enter in the center of the, this circle vector. So what you want to do is you want to grab the center of this circle here, just click on the center and drag it to where you want it in relation to your actual material. So I have this piece of material here already cut out. I'm going to go ahead and place it along this line. And so when I go, so when it actually carves, it's going to be at this location on my actual material. So go ahead and create a circle and place it wherever you want. I have three different circles here because I did three different test runs at three different speeds. So we'll go ahead and go through those real quick and um, I'll show you what I thought about it, why I didn't like it, and where I'm going to start from now on. I don't have it dialed in just yet, but this is just going to allow you to get a good starting point and then you guys can go ahead and take it from there. When creating the keyhole toolpath, I simply kept it at a 201 end mill, a quarter inch end mill. So that seemed to work out just fine. I updated the settings such as the plunge and feed rate. Go ahead and keep that in mind. We'll go over the settings that I did on these three trial runs in a second. What's important here is that your starting depth is always at the top of the top of the material, right? And because I am using three quarter inch material, the max depth that I think is best is 0.375. The angle should always be 90 because we are plunging straight into the material. I measured a keyhole of one of my current flags and it's about an inch and a half, so I kept it at an inch and a half here. You can go ahead and enter whatever you think is best for yourself, and you can go ahead and name it. One thing you wanna make sure to keep in mind is that this note says that the simulation does not support undercuts, so the 3D preview will not show a keyhole. And that's very important because when we go to the simulation, it's not going to appear as a keyhole. So keep that in mind, you're, you're not doing it wrong if it doesn't look like a keyhole. So let's go ahead and talk about these three different runs that I did. The very first toolpath that I ran, I ran with a plunge rate of 60 and a feed rate of 75. I felt that it plunged really fast and moved up into the material to create the slot very fast. So I didn't like the way that it sounded. So let's go ahead and take a look and listen to how that carved. So while I think that the first cut for the first attempt was a success, it did sound like it was really plunging in there, moving really fast. So I'm gonna to try to do it one more time and just slow it down. Let's go ahead and do that now. For the second run, I kept the plunge and feed rate at the default settings. I think the plunge was a little bit better, but the movement up into the material was, I think, a little bit slow this time around. That plunge rate was just a lot better. It just seemed like it plunged a lot better, but once it started carving up, it was struggling. At least it sounded like it was struggling. It may have been fine, but I think it was just carving a little bit too slow. It seemed like it was going to seem like it was struggling just a little bit. So let's go ahead and speed it up one last time and see if we can find that middle happy ground. And for the third test run, I kept the plunge rate the same as before at 15, but the feed rate was now 90. So I think it was a little bit faster creating that slot. It just seemed a little bit better. I think it could still be improved on, but I think this will be a good starting point for me next time around.
I think this one was the, the best carve. So I'll stick with that if I ever need to do keyholes. But let me know what your favorite keyhole settings are. I'm always looking for improvements. I appreciate you guys checking out the video. If you guys liked it, got some value out of it, make sure to please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys on the next video.